Good morning, guys. Welcome to another video. Today, we're going to make something slightly different. So, we're going to make a matching band for a 3D scan ring. So, this ring has been 3D scanned, and our customer wants a wedding band attached next to it, a wedding band to be worn next to this one. So, just to clarify, the only thing that I've done so far is aligning the 3D scan object around a finger rail. So the reason why I'm explaining this is because in some cases, not all the cases, your 3D scan ring might be somewhere in here like this and in the wrong position. So all I've done is move and rotate to position the ring in the right place. So you just draw a circle, draw a finger size, and position the 3D scan geometry in the right place. The next step, as you can see, the ring is not full. It has missing information at six o'clock, the bottom. That's usually because when you 3D scan a ring, you grab the ring from the back. So there's a piece of metal holding the ring from this position. Ideally, this ring should have been scanned twice. So what you would do is scan it once, just like this, holding it from at six o'clock, but then you should make another 3D scan holding the ring at three o'clock or nine o'clock and then put both the scans together. Usually most software for 3D scanning are able to provide this, okay? However, we don't have that, so we need to work with this. So we can still do it. It's not really an issue. All we need to do is start with the finger size. We would make an offset. I uh, would probably make the offset much smaller, like 0.7. Yeah, something like this should work. And what I'm going to do is just extrude that geometry so it becomes a surface, okay? So what I want to do is create an intersection from this geometry and this geometry, okay? Basically, I don't have information because this is a mesh. So I want to, I need to extract certain information, okay? So the way to do that would be by making an intersection between this mesh and this surface. However, I cannot do that. There is no tool that would allow me to make an intersection from a mesh and a surface. So my options are quite limited because I cannot turn this into a surface or a poly surface. Well, I could, but I recommend you not to do that. It's going to be a bit of a mess. So it's much easier to convert this into a mesh. Just type in mesh, enter, and enter. And this is the, the first geometry. This is the surface. We no longer need it, so just delete it. And now if we run mesh intersect from this and this, we will have a new line in here, you see? I'm gonna put it into the user zero one layer just to make it easier to see, okay? So this is our line. It's not perfect, but it's good enough for us to work with. So next step, we're gonna choose the finger rail and we're gonna extrude it again, like this. And now this curve that is currently touching the mesh, yeah, we're gonna pull it, so pull to this new surface and that. Okay, we no longer need this, we can delete it. So this is our um, base line to finish the geometry. So as you can see, it's going inside. We don't want that. So what we're gonna do, and also before I carry on with this, you have to be quite careful with one with something here. You should know as much information about this ring as possible. I currently don't have it, but you have to look at it from different shading views because in some cases the ring might look symmetrical but it might not be if it's something handmade quite likely it's not going to be as symmetrical as something that it's been cutted okay so you have to be quite careful with this in this case i measure it and i'm going to assume it that it's mirrored okay but be careful because in some cases it might not be okay so now this line i don't want it to curve inside so what i'm going to do is just make a point Single point on near, here, and here. And now I'm gonna just trim it to get rid of it. Okay, let's go back to shaded so we can see it a bit better. And now we're gonna use blend to blend this end with this end. You will see this little menu here, just type in okay. And now with this tool, we're gonna join it. And this is really important. You have to rebuild this line because this line, as you can see here, 
It has too much information. We don't want so much information in our range. Okay. And if you look from the front view, it's not fully aligned to this yet. So what we could do is hide our mesh geometry. We can get rid of this one because we don't need it anymore. Also, I would strongly recommend you save the document. Oh, and something quite important as well. With 3D scan geometry, in some cases, the file might just be too heavy. It really depends on who did the 3D scan and how they made it. If it's too heavy, you will not be able to manipulate the file. So you will need to do this, reduce mesh. And then you can reduce the mesh either by polygons or by a given percentage. From my experience, the minimum to work with, it's around 20,000 polygons. But again, it depends. So be careful with this. But if you are unsure, just type in reduce mesh and reduce 10% and then 10% again and then 10% again until you see that your computer is able to handle the file. Okay. But uh, yeah, so we can hide this, this one. And now this line is closed. We have a closed line, which is great, but it's not following the finger size exactly. So to fix that, we need to extrude this line. And again, run a pull command. Sorry, pull with all L here. So now, this line, which is the new one, follows exactly the shape of our finger size, OK? But again, we would need to rebuild it just a little bit, not so many. OK, uh, don't try just to make a, a smooth line. It has to be a nice line, OK? Just focus on the shape of your line. So. For my experience, 12 usually works for things like this, but you might need to increase it slightly. Okay. So something like this looks fine. Always make sure that it resembles the shape of the ring, but it doesn't need to be exactly the same. Okay. Okay. So we got something here. Then this is going to be enough for us to work on the next steps. So again, I'm going to hide this. And what I would do, I'm going to try with the profile. So I'm just going to go to Profile Placer. And I don't think this is going to work. I could simply put a profile here, maybe. I'm going to change the shape to something like this. We can give it a go and see what happens. But I don't think it's going to work. If I use auto sweep, well, it actually does work to a certain extent. But as you can see, it's not really how it should be. Well, it's getting there. Um, it's not really positioning the profiles properly. Um, I mean, I could if I add another profile in there, but I don't think this is the best way to do it. The best way to do it, in my opinion, is to make this line I'm going to try to copy the line. If I can copy the line, that's great. It's going to save us a lot of time. If not, I might need to do an offset. So let's see both ways, OK? So I got this. If I copy this line, I need to copy that distance like the same width of the ring. So if I wanted to mill, if both lines look parallel, that's great. OK. And now what I would do is simply draw a line using the quadrant. So from quadrant, just like that. And here's the tricky bit, OK? Like when you draw a line like that, 
you gotta take into consideration this angle. If you make this completely straight, it might be a bit of an issue when it comes to making sure that they both fit correctly. So I would say I'm gonna make this 1.8. But now that I got this, I'm gonna get control point in here. Control points in here. And I'm gonna move it slightly this way. Yeah. So I'm just gonna do this with the one in the inside. The one on the outside is gonna stay straight. Okay. This is to make sure that the geometry will fit nicely. This is the main trick. That's why when you do profiles, it is slightly more complex. So I would say this is better. Okay. So for example, in on the side, I don't have that issue so much. So what I would do is to draw a plane like that. It's probably easier if you draw a plane than if you look for the quadrant. Um, it depends. You could also make it with a line. So go to quadrant and draw a line. It's exactly the same thing. But probably beginners would find it easier to draw a plane. So if you draw a plane, what you could do is just run an intersection from the plane and two lines. So you will have two points that is going to help you to draw everything a bit more accurately. But anyway, if you need to draw a plane, go ahead, do it. It's great. If you don't, just go for quadrant. Okay. The only thing you got to make sure is that you make it 1.8. Okay. 1.8, 1.8. And now look for the endpoints. I could also technically use different profiles, but it might not work exactly the same way. Okay. Now I'm going to mirror this to the other side, but I got to make sure, you see, it's not exactly aligned. That's because the ring is not completely, completely symmetrical. So that's something to consider, okay? What I is going to make sure, I'm going to put a point on the quadrant just so that I can, and on this quadrant, just so that I can move everything in the right place. Okay. So that's good enough so far. I'm going to hide this just to make it easier for you. And also, I can try to make sweep to rail, sweep to one, two, and then the cross section curves. I will do the end later. I just want to check how everything fits together so far. Yeah, I think it's feeling quite good. I might not need so much in here, so I can just go to solid. Well, I could just get this and angle it slightly. Okay, and then run the sweep again. I could have used his toy for the helm. It's the same thing. So just like that. Okay. Now it fits much better. Okay. So I can give it a go and see if I can run the sweep all the way around. So one rail, another rail, profile, profile. Yep, that works. So that's pretty much done. I'm going to put it in another layer so you can see it a bit better. Um, yeah, so as you can see, we made a matching wedding band from a 3D scan geometry, even if we did not have all the information of the 3D scan ring. Again, I would strongly suggest you take extra care when 3D scanning the geometry, just to make sure that the resolution is good enough, in this case it is, and that you have a full 3D scan, okay?
I hope you enjoyed this. I'm looking forward to see what you're able to do. And if you have any questions, any doubts, feel free to contact me. Thank you so much.